Hi folks, it's author Richard James the Socio bringing you the story of why the Rockefellers killed the Kennedys. I'm standing here on the corner of 5th Avenue and 79th Street. And um, you just came, behind me is the Museum of, uh, the Metropolitan Museum of Modern Art. And uh, I just visited the um, Museum of Michael Rockefeller, Museum of Primitive Art. And uh, if you know the story of Michael Rockefeller, he drowned it in, um, uh, it was um, New Guinea. And he drowned it while he was uh, part of an expedition. And he collected a lot of uh, primitive art from the Azmat tribe. And it's on display. It's very, if you come to New York, you should go see it. It's really impressive. And uh, actually, if you go into that building, you'll see the name Rockefeller all over the place. All the people who killed Kennedy, uh, the so-called philanthropists, they got their names on all the museums and and um, hospitals and art galleries and doesn't make any difference, you know. Well, they made a lot of money as, as criminals. So then they want to, um, you know, clean up their reputation. So they throw some change around and they become philanthropists. People forget how they got their money, murdering people and stealing. But that's what I'm trying to change. I want to educate people to the truth. If you go to the Kennedy assassination crime scene, you see the school book depository. School books. See, the Rockefellers publish all the school books, so you they make you think they're they're good deed doers, when they're nothing but criminals. But anyways, this building you see in front of me ties to the Kennedy assassination. Everything in the story, even the death of Michael Rockefeller ties to the Kennedy assassination. It's because when you're dealing with the Rockefeller universe, it's a universe composed of hundreds of galaxies. Um, but this building is the home of Harry Sinclair, a famous, a very dark episode in American history when um, the Rockefellers essentially bought the United States government. And um, Harry Sinclair was the boss at Sinclair Oil. But it was all part of a massive scheme by the Rockefellers. Um, it was a worldwide scheme, actually. A lot of people never knew that. But what was happening at the time was governments around the world were trying to find, get their own oil reserves. They didn't want to depend on standard oil for their oil. Well, the Rockefellers weren't no part of that. You know, they went around the world and told their, they made secret deals with every country in the world. Said, well, you want oil, you got to buy it from standard oil. You got to buy it from the Rockefellers. And that's what really that was the thing with Teapot Dome, because the oil in question there was part of the, uh, the Naval Oil Reserve. So anyways, I, you know, we could go on and on and on, but it all ties, Teapot Dome ties to the Kennedy assassination because George E. Morenchild's uncle married the daughter of William Gibbs M McAdoo, who was involved in Teapot Dome. But Gibbs was the uh, United States Secretary of uh, Treasury for Wilson. They were essentially Rockefeller hand puppets. But anyways, if, and, you know, George uh, Oswald's friend, George um, Dimenchis, I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing things. George De Morenchis. Morenchis. Well, I'm okay. We'll have to correct that. But anyway, George. Let's just say George. He said in his Warren Commission testimony, he was working for people connected with Sinclair Oil. Well, this is Sinclair's home, and Sinclair Oil was headquartered in Rockefeller Center at the corner of 48th and Fifth Avenue, down a ways, down a three or four miles south of here. And, uh, you know, that, that corner, everybody, three people connected with the Kennedy assassination connected to that corner. One was, well, George at uh, 48. And the other one was David Ferry. Uh, George was murdered. He was found shot to death. David Ferry was indicted by Jim Garrison 
And within a few hours of being indicted, he was found dead. And uh, Ferry was a flyer for Eastern Airlines, which was run by the Rockefellers, run by Lawrence Rockefeller. And Eastern Airline Buildings was next to the Sinclair Oil Building on 48th Street. And then you go down a ways to the old Vanderbilt Theater, which is now is an empty lot owned by the Rockefellers, part of their land assemblage. Um, that was a, it was actually run by NBC back in the 30s. They were doing uh, broadcasting radio performances. Uh, of course, NBC was started by the Rockefellers and headquartered in Rockefeller Center, which is famously known. And he was, uh, well, Clay Shaw, who was indicted by um, uh, Jim Garrison, actually performed there on 48th Street. So three people, three people involved. Uh, Clay Shaw died a few years later of uh, cancer, but uh, Fury was found dead. And... Um, George had his head blown off. Yeah, you don't want to mess with Rockefellers, folks. They're very dangerous. That's why I'm standing up to them. I'm not afraid of them. But anyways, oh, I'm going to show you something else here. I'm going to show you a lot of things here. I'm going to pan the camera a little bit. I'm going to move the camera, actually. And, um... Uh, okay, you see the building... All right, there it is. There's actually a building. Okay, you had the building on the corner. Next building is actually the pain, the pain, um, um, Payne Whitney Mansion. That was a gift from uh, Uncle Payne, Colonel Oliver Hazard Payne, who was a co-founder with Rockefeller in forming Standard Oil. He he bought that for his nephew. As a wedding gift. Now, his nephew was, well, and his uh, grand nephew was Jack Whitney, who was one of Nelson's closest pal, and who I've connected numerous times with the Kennedy assassination. And the, the next building is, the next building is, if you can see it, well, I should move the camera across the street, but there's trees in the way. Can't see it too good. So oh, there's the upper part of it. Maybe you can see it better from a distance, but that's it right there. Right there. That's the home of Duke, Duke Tobacco. Oliver uh, Payne was a co partner forming the, uh, uh, the tobacco oligarchy. Most of these things are museum. The uh, pain, uh, the pain, um, the pain Whitney home is owned by the government of France. Now the government of France in the United States is headquartered in Rockefeller Center. And um, so, anyways, I'm giving you some more information here. I'm gonna pan the camera a little bit more. And maybe I'm just gonna swing this camera around. I think I'm gonna show you to the front of the Metropolitan. Folks, by the way, Central Park. The Metropolitan Museum is located in Central Park. Just want to show you this museum. If you've never seen it. Look at the people, folks. Thousands and thousands of people come here. And you know something? They try to make you pay, but if you're from New York State, you don't have to pay.
But that's how these people operate. They're always trying to squeeze you for money. That's why they got rich. Okay, Rockefellers don't give anything away, folks. Believe me. It goes back when they started stealing horses. I don't know if I told you this, but this is the uh, what they call the Museum Mile. See all these very wealthy mansions, they turn them in, they put a couple paintings in the living room and then they turn them into tax-exempt museums. Most expensive real estate in the world. Believe me folks, these people are not philanthropists. They're criminals. There it is. Wow. And it's a uh, McKim Mead White Building. There it is, folks. Look at the people. Look at the thongs and thongs of people. It's good to know that the arts attract more than baseball. There it is. And then there is the Michael Payne. I'm sorry, the Michael Rockefeller Primitive Art Collection. Look at the people, folks. Okay, so folks, remember, if you go in there and you're from New York State and they try to make you pay, just tell them you don't have to pay. And actually, I think you, even if you're from, uh, they call it the Tri-State, you're from the Tri-State area, which I'm sure would include New Jersey, you don't have to pay, but they don't let you know that. But I paid. I paid. I paid. I was glad to pay. I paid the senior prices. Look at the size of that building. Look at the size of it. This is actually Central Park. Look at, look at the size of this place. It's just, and it's a great collection of art. Endless. You couldn't see it all in a day. Okay.